Well, welcome on the second leg of the conversation as we discourse on those members of parliament who are new uh, to the August House. It, the, the, the dynamics very interesting, and we're going to be delving into them. We're going to look a bit at some of the casualties who have had to cede their places for new members of parliament uh, to come in. The dynamics are very interesting. But let me uh, welcome aboard Joseph Opoku Gapo. How are you doing? I'm very well. I think this is the first time my parts are crossing on this platform. On oh, the AM yeah, show, sure, eh? I'm telling you. Uh, uh, we've it, done Zoom we've done before. Zoom. You but know, but it's, it's never like... It's never the same. In person and never the same. I've done the stuff thing. with uh, another Joe, uh, Akabele. Okay. Uh, this is the first time we are going toe-to-toe -to -toe on well. the show. And it's I all about the new entrance in Parliament. First of all, even before we get into the conversation, as our parliamentary correspondent, as the man who's on the beat when it comes to parliament and with your institutional knowledge, you know, of the August House, some of the casualties, did you see them coming? To a very large extent, particularly in this election, and I've made this point before, that after what we saw in the NPP primary itself, with a lot of the very big faces and big names losing in the NPP primary that unfolded sometime earlier this year, I'm not surprised about any of those sitting MPs who ended up losing their seats. Because then, following that, then I was under the impression, looks like the ordinary voter is a bit more sophisticated now, and people are paying more attention to uh, the, the, the regular issues that they had paid attention to. Eventually, um, I wasn't surprised about how things turned out. How Dr. Bernardo Coboy, regardless Lost of what he did, that's one of the things that that's a savage actually... constituency. <laughs> That's Four years and no more. You know, just today I was watching some video that had been compiled about the young member of parliament, deputy minister of health, and some of the things he had done in the hope that he would be able to retain the seat. But you listen to the people on the back of the election and it appears it was still not enough. It's, it's interesting. I get a sense that people of Ledger Kuku just want to maintain their track record that as frequently as possible, <laughs> they don't allow any individual to actually win the seat um, a second term. Mm. Uh, the other one that actually surprised me was how Peter Mehu managed to grab the Hohoi seat. Did it come as a surprise, really? I, I, it, honestly, it did. And Mehu has been on the ground in Hohoi for quite a while. Don't you forget, it goes back to the days of, you know, his work there, uh, even before he entered Parliament. So it, it's not a novelty as far as Amewu is concerned in he, terms of his being on the ground. He's been district chief executive. He became regional uh, chairman of the party, obviously paid attention to the constituency. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's this, if I could call it so, backward thinking, that places like Ashanti, places like Vota, places that on a regular day, the NDC is likely to win, the MPP is likely to win the other side. Mm. Um, he, he had sent a lot of development to the area, of course. He had he, he really improved upon the lives of the people. But targeting people, individuals. They, exactly. But of course, the, the, the impression was still that this was a very, a, play, a very heavy stronghold as far as the NDC was concerned, which wouldn't have made it possible. You know how much work folks like Ophi Jamesi have done in K2 North? Ah, uh, you yeah. know, to the extent that uh, they've been at it for quite a while and have still no money to snap those seats. Yeah. And but we actually did magic. And uh, congratulations to him for that. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, some of these strongholds, I mean, in the eastern region, eight seats clawed. Uh, away by uh, the NDC. You can talk about the fact that uh, Chairman Wuntemi, the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the NPP, had been saying that in the, the Ashanti region, they would not make inroads. In fact, they were going to wrest the three seats from them. But guess what? They got four. They even the added... Addition, they, you know, they added New Adubiase. Exactly. They added New Adubiase. New Adubiase is also a constituency that from time to time has its own you know, games that it plays. But by and large, it's been an MPP. You know, the, 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 the reality is that the NDC made a huge showing. Mm. Unfortunately, they were coming from a very deep pit yeah. coming up there. The difference was about 63 seats, yeah. comparing the NEC and the NPP as far as this parliament is yeah. concerned. 106, 169. 106, 169. So they flipped a lot, uh, except that you know, the numbers, at least from what the EC is telling us, and right. even from our own tabulation, right. uh, shows that it's obviously not enough for them to then gain the it's majority. Just, it's but just there. It, it, it's almost just there. there. Almost I there. guess in, if it were football, they would say, Eka kete 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 kete. Uh, uh, unfortunately, kete kete no and yeah, in a lot of different. But it's going to make Parliament very, very, I wouldn't say contentious, but uh, very, it will keep members of Parliament on their toes. Because, you know, there are some 
uh, you know, motions that you want to pass, you need two thirds. There are certain things. So there, it means that you really need to judge or you really need to work together. Like, you know, the president elect was saying on the day when he was accepting, you know, victory, he was actually saying that this time, and you could tell that aggressiveness was no longer there because now you have to play ball. Exactly. And I think one of the problems with health face is the issue of absenteeism in the house, mm. because chances are that the lower your figures, the lower the chance of you losing various votes that are coming. But of course, then it creates a room for the various parties, particularly the MPP and the NDC, to ensure that um, as much as possible, they are consulting and they are um, you know, working together. But a lot of it will depend on what happens in the next few days. Um, we, we know that the minority MPs still have concerns, as well, as including their flag bearer, as well as their flag bearer, about how they claim that they won this election and it's been uh, stolen, in quotes, for the NPP. Um, as to how they will still be ready to sit down for a cooperation going forward, despite the stand that they've taken, it's a different story. So Parliament is returning today. Um, there's been a lot of talk about chances of the minority MPs displaying some form of protest going into today and probably being clad in black or something as a way to show that they are uh, still protesting the election is likely to happen. So I'm, I'm making the point that the next few days will be crucial. A decision on who leads both sides, who becomes speaker, will actually be taken before right. the 6th exactly. of January when the House eventually exactly. finishes its sitting and all. A, a, a lot of how things look like in the next parliament will be highly dependent on that as to whether um, eventually John Mahama would come around and how the leadership of the NDC would want to encourage the MPs to work with it. It remains to be Otherwise, seen. then it's uh, a, a lot of trouble that we'll see. So let's do this. As we delve into the new entrance, I would like to start from the women's front. And that is pretty interesting. In the seventh parliament, 38 of them. Now we have 40 of them, 25 retaining their seats, uh, some 15 of them new entrants. And boy, oh boy, interesting picture. I mean, Agnes Latte in Crowa, as you can see on your screens, uh, Abla Jifago Mashi in K2 South, Dokas Afo Toffee, Jomoro constituency. That's where there was a bit of an attack. But let's talk about uh, Dokas because she is mother of musician Fantana. Precisely. And, and people see and, her, they're thinking, <laughs> whoa. And, and there's talk about how some musicians were in the town to campaign and, you know, do a concert ahead of the post itself. But uh, we are told she has actually been an active member of the party in the constituency for quite a while now, right. uh, supporting various activities, um, being involved in women activities in the constituency and beyond. Mm. Unfortunately, her claim to fame has to do with her sh being the mother of Fantana. Right. Uh, she managed to win the race at the constituency level of the NDC in the primaries very convincingly. Mm. And uh, there are huge expectations. You know, that's a seat that has virtually been flipping for quite a while now. It's the CPP has held it before in recent history. Samia, MPP, Samia Nkrumah. Uh, exactly, Samia Nkrumah, who came back as an independent candidate. Yes, um, but did not make it. You know, exactly. Um, the NPP has held it before with policy, and, yeah. and the NDC sees her as um, the magic person who has managed to right. wrestle it from both sides. So, so from, from, from her... Uh, in the greater Accra region, quite a showing here as uh, well, with I think now 20 of the seats uh, with the NDC and about 14 of them oh, with the, uh, the NPP. And when you come here, I mean, in, in, in the guy areas, Rita Naoduli, so yes, for Lada example, Ladadi Lada uh, That's a uh, new one. Uh, yes, and, and, and even the earlier reference, um, the, the, apart from um, Fantana's mother, we had. Um, uh, 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 the Crow MP as well, Crow uh, Agnes, as well. Yeah. who managed to wrestle that seat from a female, mm. um, uh, Elisabetta Foloke. So then just if it hadn't been two women fighting for the seat and we're having a situation where one was fighting elsewhere right. and the person who was being dislodged wasn't a woman, they would have had probably an additional one woman right. taking up. And the, the number of that in terms of women losing two women, um, that's an interesting place. But again, then it shows that we, we're having a lot of the women actually getting involved in the various places. Uh, Rita Doleque, another key person, um, for, for a very long time, honestly, uh, until she won the seat and we all went digging her background, she wasn't actually a name that was quite familiar 
as far as the activities of the NDC in this particular region is concerned. Um, but, 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 but it speaks to the, the point about, it, it's not just a case of them trying to empower more women to get into the seat, uh, but then she also appears to be someone who has really worked for a long time, yeah. both within the greater Accra region area as far as the NDC is concerned, and even beyond the, uh, at the level of the uh, national executive. She has a very solid background. Um, the interesting thing going into the next parliament would be the backgrounds of these individuals, because then it will feed directly into which committees that they would be on, and we are likely to see them come up more based on whatever background that they are coming to. Um, another very interesting showing as well in the Lada de Kotok. Okay, yeah. so let's do another one from the Great Accra region, and maybe we'll go to the central region. I'm sure you know I'm, exactly I'm more where, where, I'm where, also where, really where interested. I'm also really interested. But there's also Ablikuma North. Now there's a history to the Ablikuma North seat because. When you mention Sheila Bartels, Kwame Bartels comes to mind. Second Parliament, 1996. Third Parliament from 2000. Her father was in that slot. And you can call it history repeating itself after, what, some 16 years where Sheila Bartels. And she won by a whopping, you know, maybe 20 plus thousand, almost 30,000 votes. That's quite a testament. And, you know, she managed to beat an incumbent MP in that particular constituency even before then. Uh, she got onto the ticket of the NPP. And uh, while the expectation was huge that she would have won, especially coming from the background that you mentioned, a place where, a home where they've done politics for a lot of years. The father was the former interior minister yep. at a point in time in the previous administration. And so that clout is there. And then there's the assumption that um, that experience, well, not exactly experience, but at least knowledge would come to bear on the work that she would be doing in the house as well. So. Um, another huge show in there by women, and congratulations to her as well. Okay, now let's go to the central region before we go to the Volta region, because there are quite some newbies there as well. But in the central region, you know, Ophelia was able to hold on to her deceased husband's uh, seat in Infantiman. It was one of those areas with a, a bit of a tricky past in terms of voting patterns, and it wasn't clear exactly how the outcome would be, but she's been able to retain the seat for uh, the NPP, and she's going to be in the 8th Parliament. Uh, exactly. Uh, she has a security background, the former police officer, she rose to the rank of chief inspector. Yeah. Uh, eventually, she had to leave the police service when the husband passed on, and the party felt that she would be the best person to actually... Uh, help. Just like uh, happened in the case of Lydia Sairam Al Hassan, uh, uh, who was also, you know, similar circumstances, and she was brought in. Uh, uh, exactly, and then there is the case of um, Shai Sudoku, which is not exactly a repeat of that because the husband of Lydia Oklu was actually the candidate, and then he passed on, and then when he passed on, then she took on as the candidate, and eventually then she won. But then yes, um, sh she appears to have a very interesting background, particularly coming from the security standpoint. And then that makes the point about someone else you were mentioning earlier in the Wild West area, Peter Tobu. Ah, so at least Dalanjim having, Tobu. Yes. At, at least we're having two former police officers mm. getting into the space to help with the conversation. Most likely they'll serve in the uh, Defense and Interior Committee because, again, with the revision of the standing orders, a lot of emphasis is actually being placed on people getting into spaces where they have that background in. Yeah. Uh, but then, yes, yeah, she, she did very well. The margin of win wasn't that huge. We know the NDC um, had also made a very huge showing in there. Um, we wait to see how things will turn out. But I, I'm excited that all these women are coming into the space with very interesting experiences, very good background, some very solid personal experiences. And, right. you know, it will go more than just them being women and participating in the city. Uh, now that you mentioned Peter Lanche in Tobu, let's just, you know, bring that into, you know, context as well. I mean, former executive secretary to David Asantia Pia too, a former IGP. It was a pretty tricky system, but he was confident at the time. I remember he, was, he felt very confident that yeah. the people, this seems to be to have been the people, you know, reaching out and saying per his story, we want you to take over from here. And it, it appears that was a vote of confidence on December 7th. And, and he defeated a very big guy, yep. uh, Joseph Yele Chire, mm -hmm. who has been MP for the area for more than four terms. He had he actually step went aside. Into the contest. Well, well they, they went into a race. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. He, he had exactly. him step aside. Exactly. And then he defeated him. Um, you know, at a point in time, Usually we used to reach out to him as a security analyst, yeah. you know, for interviews. All of a when sudden. The key, <laughs> when the key security issues come up and we seek in a thought as an independent um, security analyst on various issues. And then 
we saw where he repeatedly was writing various letters and press statements, criticizing various security developments. And then uh, all of a sudden, yes, he got into the space, contested the election and won. Uh, again, very rich experience. He rose to the rank of, if uh, I'm not mistaken, chief superintendent within the... He was very high ranking. Uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, specific. Yes, I, I, I think that's like superintendent, yes. Very high ranking yes. officer. So he was a, a high ranking officer. And mm. again, we look forward to him bringing that experience. Okay. Now, K2 South, was that ever in doubt? No, Ablago machine. No, no, especially because that's um, a seat that the NDC has held all this while. It's the like current, a Bantama or, you know, uh, some other. It, it, it's a seat that you really, maybe it will be about the different numbers. You, you see, but after what we saw in Hohoi, mm. you can't rule out anything as well, right. which is the other bit. But of we it. saw Krachi East, which has now come back to the NDC. It's gone green again. So the, 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 in, in, in her case, and, and she's also coming in with very rich history, and she's been involved in the uh, art space for quite a while. She served as a deputy minister for tourism. Um, the incumbent MP Fifiquete decided not to go again. She stepped in, and she's coming to the house on that particular score. Uh, we look forward to her as well, bringing that rich experience to bear on her work. Okay, so Kleta Zavoka uh, is in Zabila. Well, at least that's, uh, that's a very interesting one. Uh, and he, then Kofi Adams in Buim. Kofi Adams in Buim. Uh, of course, he has the huge experience as a political person. All this year served as NDC national organizer. Mm. Uh, Kleta Zavoka has been in parliament before, rose yep. to the rank of a majority leader. Eventually, he... I think in one of our ballot box uh, incidents, I think I, I heard... Uh, yes, so, uh, uh, he uh, yes, exactly. And so... He's returning with that very rich experience that he's had from Parliament. Although we have a lot of the old MPs losing, of course, his additional experience as a new person, although he's been there before, is, is very interesting. Not just him, but Zedin in Laura as well, has as also well. been a politically active guy, left the NDC to join the DFP. Eventually, he's got him back to the NDC and he's coming on the ticket. There are a lot more interesting names. Um, in Karaga, for example, uh, Mohamed Amin Anta, who has been Tamale MC, he's been Deputy Minister for um, Energy. This is where we'll have to wrap it up. But of course, uh, the former Vice President's son also in the mix. Farouk, Farouk. Uh, Mahama yes. is coming to Parliament. He, he's currently been working at Cocoa Board as a Deputy Chief Executive. Looks like we'll have a lot to talk about. You know, I think we should do round two of this. We should plan a round two. But Joseph Okopoku-Gapo, thank you very much for joining us this morning on the AM Show. Well, coming up next... Enhancing businesses. GIZ is organizing cloud computing uh, seminars for business owners. Find out more about that when we return on the AM Show. Do stay.